Hey there, viewer who came across this video. Welcome to my attempt at making a different kind of content on my channel. There won't be any story spoilers for Into the Radius, but there will be a couple of things that only show up late game that you may want to uh, avoid getting spoiled on. In the case that you're interested in the game, I advise you go play it and then come back and watch this video if you still remember it by the time that you're finished. Alright, thanks. On to the video. Over the past couple of weeks, uh, I've been playing a game called Enter the Radius. Or, Into the Radius. They're very similar. Anyways, I've been playing Into the Radius a lot. And I mean a lot, a lot. If you were to jump off this video in about 10 seconds or so, then I would leave you with this. Into the Radius is good. Really good. The game's still in beta at this point, and it's already one of my absolute favorite VR games of all time. Hear me? Just to start, the game's got incredibly good atmosphere. The game has very little prefacing the events of the world beyond the tutorial that takes place in a sort of dreamscape nightmare land. So stepping out into the Radius' vast wasteland for the first time smashes you in the face with the fact that you're entering a massive desolate wasteland. A wasteland that, uh, for starters, really doesn't like you. I'm, I'm not fucking touching that. Not a chance. Everything from the small flakes that perpetually float in and around you to the cars suspended mid-air by literally nothing lets you know that you are in danger at every single point in time that you're out here, and that you're just a little human in a big world full of funny looking circles and flaky old death monsters that really want you dead. Fuck you. On the topic of uh, flaky death monsters, those things can come in uh, several shapes and sizes. From normal looking human guy man dude, to what in the holy hell is that, please get away from me. Most of these guys opt to murder you dead through the process of throwing hands, with the occasional gun wielding police cosplayer showing up on roofs and at your door to shoot you. This lack of uh, variety in enemy attack methods sort of makes sense when you consider that the enemies have to be a fair fight for a schmuck wearing a toaster on his face. Due to that, many of the enemies you face will be unique in other aspects, such as weaknesses, or more commonly, how they move around, which they tend to copy from the various forms of locomotion that your typical VR user uses. This includes the guys who trudge around normally, the people who no longer give a shit and sprint through entire clusters of anomalies. Uh, you got the people who just teleport around and scare the shit out of you when you're not paying attention. And uh, you got... Uh, oh, you enter into my domain. I mean... This, alongside a slew of stalker-esque anomalies that really like their personal space, is what makes Into the Radius so intriguing. The variety of enemies, with the addition of modifiers that force you to adapt even further than you'd first expect to, allows for you to habitually face a moment where you once again realize that this wasteland is not for you and you should run away.
I think that the feeling of unbelonging is absolutely essential to Into the Radius's vibe. The game has such an immense feeling of loneliness that only really sets in as you realize that you're the only one here. There's no shopkeep, there's no tutorial guy, you're alone, with only an automated turret to vent your sorrows to. Put your hands above your head for identification. Okay. Put your hands above your head for identification. Explorer, you don't have a mission. Even as you play the game for longer, get used to the enemies and memorize where all the anomalies are, you never really shake that sense of loneliness. Even when you think you've gotten past the lonely feelings, you might be able to catch yourself talking or singing to yourself to fill the empty space that would otherwise be filled by friendly NPCs. And... Yeah. It'd be nice to see this this cleaning rod up here being functional. Like maybe this is this is empty, and then you put a cleaning rod in that because that would just be kind of cool. It can kind of feel like booting up GM Construct on Gary's mod alone. And just walking around, taking in the silence that would normally be covered up by the chaos of you and your friends goofing off. It can feel serene at times, when you just get to rest and look at your strangely beautiful surroundings. Oh, gee, it goes so far up. Like smokestacks that are just extending into the sky, that's crazy. But at other times, it can be crushing to know that you're all alone, with no one to show all your victories and treasures to. Everything I've said thus far gives me reason to safely argue that Into the Radius does apocalyptic better than anything else in the VR market right now. It has everything that makes a wasteland intriguing, and it does everything that it strives to do almost perfectly. Save for a few bugs that can be chalked up to the game being in early access, Into the Radius is an incredible game, and I'd advise anyone who can afford a PC-compatible VR headset to check it out for themselves.